So welcome, welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be back with our all-star beauty sessions. We are gonna be having so many fun chats about summer beauty and all sorts of great topics over the coming weeks. And today we wanted to kick off the series with some summer ready skincare tips because it is actually really important seasonally and you've probably heard me harp on this about like about every quarter, about every season, kind of do a skin assessment. Like how's your skin doing? How are things going? Because the weather has such a dramatic impact on the condition of our skin. Um, summer and winter are being the most dramatic shift. Um, and it has to do with stuff outside going on in the world and inside our homes as well. We just have been doing all this work on our house and just the amount of dust and in the spring it's like one day it's really hot and we have the AC on and then it was literally just snowing a little bit ago and we had the heat <laughs> on and we're going everyone's spring cleaning and going through things and kicking up dust and it's funny because around this time I have a lot of clients reach out about their skin kind of doing crazy things but there are a lot of allergens in the air there's a lot of things environmentally and I'll be like have you been spring cleaning have you been digging in boxes have you been in your basement and they're like yes and I'm like well there you go because that alone can really trigger reactions in the skin you know our skin is very aware of what is going on and leading into summer I really like people being aware because we are still in spring but I do like people to be aware about the changes that happen during the summer so, you know, I like to start these off with a little Q&A. So I want you all to throw out, like, what kind of factors do you think impact our skin in the summer? And why do we need to maybe make some changes in our skincare routine for summertime? Not as dry. Huh? It's not as dry. It's a little bit more humid. We have the afternoon thunderstorms, you know, whereas the winter, it seems like it's just really frigid and dry. Yep. So winter, it is so much more dry in the air, but also like people are existing indoors more with their heat on a lot of times. And that is incredibly dehydrating on the skin. Um, so yeah, maybe a little more moisture in the air. Anyone else? Sweat. Yeah. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, Anyone else? I've, when I go out and walk now in the springtime and that, I have allergies, but not enough to bother me in my walking. Mm -hmm. But still there's construction up the road that I walk past and walk through. There's uh, heavy trees on the other side. There's heavy traffic on the interstate that's on the other side where I walk. And then I got residential area that I walk through. And it's just like a myriad of things that are out there, especially during springtime. It's not only pollution, not only wind, dust, dirt, you name it, whatever's floating in the air. I'm just like, okay, is my skincare actually going to take care of all that? Which so far it has, thank goodness, but uh, I need more info. <laughs> no, but that's a great point. Like, this time of year, people are getting out more. People are spending more time outside. And I really think, especially with how the last year has been, people now, and even a lot of cities are really encouraging people to get out more. They're organizing events and trying to get people out. I know here in Denver, they literally, they're trying to copy us, by the way, they're calling it the all-star summer. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, so bad. <laughs> Drying Denver. Denver is? Yeah, we it's have the baseball all-star game here this summer and they're, it's all-star summer. And, but people are outside more and they're out in the elements. It'll, it's wet outside and it's rainy and it's unpredictable and it's great. And then all of a sudden there's a thunderstorm and they're out in the dust and the construction and the pollution and all of that. And so, and they're out in, when you're outside, you are in the sun more. And um, so people are out, everyone's good like I'm just waiting for people to start posting about their accidental sunburns oh my gosh you can't believe this happened that's so crazy I'm like were you outside why are you surprised um 
And when we're outside more and it's warmer, people are in sandals. They're showing more skin, you know? And so with this, it's not just necessarily about here. It's literally sometimes a conversation about head to toe. What are we gonna do to change up our skincare routine to kind of prepare us for all of those factors? And so this session, we're gonna focus on the skincare part, but we're definitely gonna have um, makeup sessions around different summer topics like sweat proof, waterproof your makeup. And um, I know we've had asks for stuff on bronzing and shaving and all sorts of great stuff. So we're gonna have all sorts of great chats coming up throughout the weeks. So make sure you stay tuned and stay connected with your beauty guys so you don't miss those. Um, hi, Lisa, thanks for hopping on. So let's get going. So I'm gonna walk through some of these things and I just decided I'm gonna tackle these topics kind of from the beginning of our skincare routine to the finish of our skincare routine because that just made sense to me. <laughs> so let's start with cleansing. The first step of our skincare routine is cleansing and I'm a huge fan of a double cleanse, but in the summer months, I, I really want, pe I like people leaning into a double cleanse even more because it is more dry in the winter. And so sometimes people really just like to keep their skincare and their cleansing more simple to protect the oils on their skin. Um, maybe they're using an oil cleanser exclusively, but it's an interesting balance in the summer when it's hot and when we're sweaty. And I, Denver is very dry and it's really dusty here a lot of times. And I can't, I can swear I can feel it on my skin. And so a double cleanse is really important in the summer because we are outside more. It helps really make sure we are doing a deeper cleanse to remove dirt, oil, pollution, all of that. But people are using more waterproof products in the summer. And a double cleanse is a really great way to make sure that you are fully removing your makeup, but also it does a much better job of actually removing waterproof products. Now, a double cleanse traditionally is an oil-based cleanser or makeup remover type products to start. And then you follow with your regular cleanser. For me, I get really creative with a double cleanse. For me, it's just you're cleansing twice. There's a lot of ways to do it. I tailor it based on people's skin and their skincare needs and what works for them. Um, the midnight oil is such a phenomenal cleanser. Um, a lot of times people will call it a pre-cleanse, the oil cleanse, however you want to call it. One tip that I did want to share, a lot of people make the mistake of using an oil-based cleanser like a traditional cleanser and they will wet their face and they're like mixing it all up and on there. An oil is actually going to be much more effective if you are, especially if you are using it to remove makeup, dirt oil, all that stuff actually get it in your hand and massage it onto your skin when your skin is dry because the emulsion changes when water gets involved in any oil-based cleanser. It's a cleansing balm, cleansing oil, all of that. So if you really do want like the most potent power to deeper cleanse with an oil, actually get it in your hands and massage it onto your face and really work it in um, before your skin is wet. And then if you want to, when you wet it, you can actually do a second round even if, if that's what you want to do. Another great option um, is to make sure that you are using that Make Off Makeup Remover Spray. I swear by that stuff. In my business, I use some really gnarly waterproof products and um, that stuff works like no one's business. And I do love that it's only three ingredients and it is actually oil-free. And so it does a very, very good job of doing a pre-cleanse, thoroughly removing makeup, and then you can get into the cleansing routine. Um, Dream Clean, I can't live without in the summer. And Dream Clean is also incredibly effective. It's a foaming cleanser at removing makeup. That stuff is also bananas, but it's not stripping. A lot of foaming cleansers, especially ones that are geared towards combination to oily skin or breakout prone skin, can be very drying and it is just not a drying skincare product. Um, it's really super effective, but it also fights hyperpigmentation. And this is gonna come up a bit throughout this. And if feel free to, if I don't mention it with some of the other categories, let me know one thing that happens in the summer 
when our skin gets hot, when we are in the sun more? Is that all of that awesome hyperpigmentation that you've been working so hard over the summer months to calm down will kick back up very, very quickly. So people that especially battle um, melasma or have had extensive sun damage and hyperpigmentation from the sun, when our, we get, when our skin gets hotter, that flares up and comes back and it can be really, really frustrating for a lot of people. And so I really love integrating ingredients and products that safely fight hyperpigmentation without um, chemical skin lighteners. And so keep that in mind too, um, those of you here that are beauty guides um, too, is that we have a lot of products and there are a lot of products out there that help treat hyperpigmentation in the skin in a lot of different ways. And I'm gonna talk about a lot of those things. Um, one of the reasons I do love Dream Clean is that it is, it's such a great cleanser, but it, that's one of the things that it does is it fights inflammation, fights hyperpigmentation, and is just like antioxidants are your friends. It has antioxidants in it and I love it. Um, so that's another thing is that we're in the sun more, we want antioxidants all up on our face, all up on our skin. We want all the antioxidants. And so we're gonna be chatting more about that. And so really I love a double cleanse in the summer because we wanna get that pollution off. We wanna get all the dirt and oil and all the things. And we really wanna make sure that our skin is nice and clean because when our skin gets warm, our pores open more, stuff's getting in there more. And so double cleanse is a, a really great way to get your routine going strong. So now I wanna talk about toning, exfoliating, all of that. I don't always tone in the winter because I um, am really focusing on like nourishing and hydrating my skin um, and then moisturizing as well. Toning in the summer can be great, but it's super important to be aware of what's in your toners because we know traditionally toners were meant to rebalance the pH of our skin because cleansers used to be so harsh and they would like throw off the pH of our skin and that will do wonky things when you're the pH of your skin. Um, in the summer, again, like we are talking about a deeper cleanse, um, exfoliating is important because when we get more UV exposure, it just makes our skin do interesting things. Like I could go off about what it is, but what I do want to say is when we get more and more sun exposure, it can make our skin want to produce more oil. And then we start producing more oil and then we're doing things to treat that. And so we can get caught in kind of rough cycles of oil production in our skin in the summer. So integrating in um, toners and exfoliants that are hydrating and nourishing on the skin are great. But anytime you're using alpha hydroxy acids, beta hydroxy acids, retinoids, all of that, that are in a lot of serums and products out there is that absolutely only use those at night. And I'm seeing more and more products with alpha hydroxy and beta hydroxy acids recommending them. Like you can use it twice a day. And I'm like, please don't. And, um, I, as an esthetician, I'm saying this <laughs> and as a beauty guide and as someone who has worked with a lot of different product lines, brands don't always recommend the usage of a product the way a skincare professional would. Brands think about skincare, I feel like very differently. And some consumers are like, I'm going to follow what it says on the bottle. And I'm like, I don't always agree with that. And I'm going to say this is a beauty guide with Lime Life too. I don't always agree with, you know, but again, I have, it's, I don't, not even all estheticians agree on, you know, routines and treatments and all of that, you know, like that's the beauty of it is that there's foundational information and then there's how we practice it. And then there's theories behind it. Um, I am a minimalist when it comes to exfoliating acids and those types of things compared to how they're typically recommended. I just, I see a lot of really potent products that companies are saying like use two times a day. You can use it during the day and night, but I will say, especially in the summer and especially when we were talking about how hyperpigmentation can flare up, 
these products like lactic acid is one of my favorite ingredients and it's brightening and it helps treat hyperpigmentation and it's a hydrating exfoliant and it can really help our skin barrier be stronger. But if we're using it during the daytime and if we're overusing it and we're stripping our barrier and then we're not using sunscreen, it's going to do more damage than good. Um, and in the summer, I really tell people to make conscious choices when they are using like glycolic acid and retinoids. Like, what are you doing the next day? Like, I will actually recommend sometimes if they're out and about and they're going to be out at a soccer tournament all weekend or hiking or whatever, like maybe don't use your retinoids on Friday if you know you're going to have a weekend in the sun. Maybe like skip the glycolic acid um, because when they absorb into our skin, they synthesize, you know, they create a synthesis of reactions in our skin that happen even when they are not physically on our skin. And our skin is going to just be more vulnerable to heat and UV. And so we have to, and I'm going to go off on SPF later, believe you me. But um, I, my baseline is that especially in the summer, especially when it's hot, keep all of your exfoliating acids um, and retinoids just to the evening and you don't have to exfol use these products every single day even if that's what it says to do on the packaging <laughs> um and never mix them <laughs> because it will make your skin very sensitive so sometimes in the summer i have clients and customers that maybe love using more exfoliating acids and things in the winter. And they really just love scrubs a little bit more in the summer. They're getting more sun. They do feel a little more like dirty and sweaty and whatnot. And they do like um, a little more of a, like a scrub on the skin. And that is great. And, and so whatever works for you, but those are things to consider when we're talking about like the treatment phase of our skincare, how much sun are you getting? What is your life actually like? How is your skin doing? How is it responding to heat? I know for me, even just when I use more exfoliating acids and it's warmer out, it's, and I have a mask on, it's a whole different experience. And it's just a lot on the skin. So really be a minimalist to start when it's going to be hotter, you're going to be in the sun more because all of those types of things do make your skin more UV sensitive. Um, we want to be nice and we want to have hydrated, healed, happy skin, and we don't want it sensitized when we're going to be out and about. That's super important. Does anyone have any questions on that? I got a question. Go for it, Marlena. Um, I like using One Drop Wonder. Mm -hmm. And I use I used to use it just under my eyes. Mm -hmm. I've been going all over my face now because it just it feels good. It absorbs well, and I think it's healing of what sun damage I have around mm -hmm. on my neck. But I also use Sotox. Yeah. Is it okay to put the one drop wonder on? And then the Sotox all over my face as well as One Drop Wonder, or is that too much? Oh, it's definitely not too much. Like, okay. go for it. Go to town. They're both meant <laughs> to be used all over. And those two in concert are a really phenomenal combination. Um, and that is a perfect segue, Marlena, into the next section. We're going to talk about like hydrating and moisturizing the skin. Um, one of the reasons why I absolutely love Sotox and One Drop Wonder for summer is that they are both fight hyperpigmentation very well. They are both very antioxidant rich. Um, again, antioxidants are our best friend when we are going to be in the sun. They fight free radical damage. Free radical, that process is initiated with UV exposure. And so vitamins C and E are very, very important. And a lot of plant-based ingredients are super antioxidant rich. And um, Sotox has ingredients that very effectively and naturally fight hyperpigmentation, but it's also super duper hydrating and it actually does have a little lactic acid in it, but not a lot of people know that. Um, and so it is a, just a really phenomenal skincare ingredient. I mean, skincare product, but they are meant to 
be used together. And there's a lot of conversations. What do you do first? Like Sotox or One Drop Wonder. I don't really care what order they're applied in. I always prefer, and this is how I make recommendations. Um, I go water-based ingredient to oil-based ingredients because when we start with a layer of oil on the skin, it's just reinforcing our skin's natural barrier. And so it's going to hinder the absorption of and slow the process of absorption of more water-based ingredients. So they're gonna be sitting on top of that, the oil-based ingredients before they can potentially absorb. And I live in an environment that is incredibly dry and your skin absorbs products better when it is damp. And so when, like, I like starting with Sotox because it is so fluid and super mm -hmm. effective and it absorbs really great. It has hyaluronic acid in it. So that helps hold water. And then I like to actually finish with One Drop Wonder, but I know people mix them. Um, what I will say is if in your hydrating, moisturizing process, if you are using an oil first, you really do need to give it at least five minutes before you start trying to apply water-based ingredients on top of it, even maybe even longer. So it does have time to properly absorb. I think that you actually have a lot more leeway to go more quickly when you go water-based to oil-based. That makes sense. It's I just mean, like, it's literally- I was going first Zotox, then One Drop Wonder. It was fine, but somehow or another, I watched other videos of other directors and that, and somebody said, it's always best to start with a light oil first and then do with, you know, what Zotox. I'm like, okay, we'll try, we'll see. And I find like how you say, one drop wonder when I put it on first, I gotta let it wait. Yeah. And, and it's just like, okay, brush my teeth during that time, go do something else and give it to, you know, it's time to do what it needs to do but it's just like, when I wash my face, I want to go one, two, three, and I'm done. Yep. I don't want to have to stand around and wait. So I'm thinking about going back to Sotox first and then One Drop Wonder. I would just say, play around and see what works for you. It's, it's, and I know that I think on the packaging, it says do One Drop Wonder first maybe, but it actually, I think used to say Sotox first. I just make recommendations the way I approach everything as a skincare professional right. and literally the science behind it and polarity. And, mm -hmm. um, if someone has like excessively, excessively dry skin, like they are legitimately lacking the oil content of their skin, then I would say maybe let's do an oil prep to start and give it some time to soak in. Then we're going to like miss the skin and get it damp. And then we're going to go in with water-based and go that in that process. Most people, it's fine. So um, at the end of the day, I care if people are putting on their skincare. <laughs> That's what I care about. <laughs> Um, so I want to talk about when we're talking about moisturizing and hydrating, remember hydration, um, is water content and moisturization is oil content and all sorts of moisturizers out there have a different balance between the water content and the water-based ingredients like aloe, glycerin, hyaluronic acid, all of that to the oil-based ingredients where we will see literally different oils in there. Um, and Again, it's based on your skin type because oilier skin types feel more oily typically in the summer months. So a lot of times what moisturizer maybe worked for them in the winter, they need a transition to something lighter in the summer. And there are people that even want to forego a traditional moisturizer during the day if they really do have very oily skin. But I just make recommendations based on like, what are you doing for your cleanser? How does your skin feel? And because I don't want people overly stripping their skin because I see that a lot in the summer because people feel more oily. I don't want to use a moisturizer. I'm going to be using all the stuff to really clean the oil on my skin. And then it's stripping it and it's making it more oily. And it just creates this tragic cycle that we don't like. So if anything, a lot of times people bump up, use something a little bit lighter. The reason I love Sotox is that it's a super effective serum. Um, it's antioxidant rich and it is a very nice light hydrating moisturizer. Um, the Cool Balm is like that too. It's aloe based. It has that cucumber and that candy oil that is very refreshing on the skin. It's that both of those work wonders too. If anyone gets a sunburn, especially on the face, 
those are phenomenal um, because they're antioxidant rich. And I love aloe in products because it is anti-pollution. Pollution amplifies the impact of UV on the skin. And so when we're out about more in the world and we get all this pollution on our skin, it literally magnifies the negative effects of UV. So when we use ingredients that are actually anti-pollution as well, like aloe, it really does protect our skin from that extra damage that can be happening um, from living our lives. So that's one of the reasons I do very much love the cool bomb. It feels amazing and it really is a great alternative, especially when people need something a little more in the winter to transition to something lighter. The skin therapy is great because it's got oat, it's got pomegranate, and the skin therapy is has the kaduku plum. Now, kaduku plum is the richest source of vitamin C that from like a natural product, basically. There's some really superstars, but kaduku plum is one of the top ones on that list for a natural source of vitamin C, and it is really a superstar ingredient, and that is in skin therapy. Um, Kelly and I told you about this ingredient. <laughs> We've talked about this. Okay. Um, you just haven't heard me babble for a while, but, um, I really love vitamin C rich ingredients and there are great vitamin C serums out there. I have some vitamin C serums that I recommend. Um, vitamin C though is historically unstable. And so it's this balance because you can pay like absurd amounts of money for high quality vitamin C serums and still not know if, it has oxidized and how effective it is. And there's so much controversy in the world of skincare around the efficacy of vitamin C serums, just because when something's a super powerful antioxidant, it also makes it wickedly unstable. And so that's why I love, um, Lime Life skincare in general is very antioxidant rich and it has a lot of phenomenal sources of vitamin C and skin therapy is actually packed with a ton of ingredients that are super rich in vitamin C, including that Kaduku plum. And a lot of people miss it because it actually has its scientific name, not, it doesn't say Kaduku plum. And that is one thing when I'm analyzing ingredients in a product, um, don't be afraid to be on the website and copy and paste on anything when you're looking, because a lot of times products don't have like, this has Kaduku plum. It will say, I don't remember its name, but <laughs> um, well, that's my little tip for you there, but, um, so I do, I do, I use vitamin C serum. I do, but I always, always love it in layers. I love making sure that, um, I'm utilizing skincare ingredients that are rich in all of these other ingredients and antioxidants and all of that as well. And so that's one of the reasons I love skin therapy is because it's super anti-inflammatory um, and it is really super rich in vitamin C. And I think that that is great. And when we are using, and here's my little quick lesson on vitamin C. Um, one of the things about vitamin C is that manufacturing makes a very big difference when you are using clinical products and how it is stored really matters. So they're really not all created equally. Um, vitamin C works as an antioxidant, but it actually works on hyperpigmentation and our glow because when we utilize it in, in an effective manner, it actually protects our skin from that, the synthesis that happens when we are exposed to UV that creates sun damage. And when our skin is protected from that process, it actually is allowed to heal it, the existing damage. And there's some really interesting studies now, not just around vitamin C, but other ingredients and other things that protect our skin and prevent that synthesis in our skin from happening that creates sun damage that allows our skin to heal and repair. And I'm going to talk about that with SPF because there's some really interesting studies now on SPF and how being religious with our SPF and even reapplying it every two hours actually can help repair sun damage. Um, that they didn't think could potentially be repaired because it's actually allowing our skin to repair itself. So that's very cool. So now we are going to talk a little bit about SPF. SPF 30 and higher always. Always, 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 always. Oh, um, Jen, so best time to use vitamin C. I use it. It depends on the product. 
Um, and I could do a whole thing on vitamin C, but some vitamin C's are oil soluble and some are water soluble. And I am, not, I really don't generally like oils. My skin does not like the oil-based vitamin C serums. And so I, when the vitamin C serum um, that I use or the ones that I do use, typically they go on after you cleanse, tone, um, whatever you're doing for exfoliation, then you lean into your antioxidants. Um, but sometimes, and vitamin C is in that category. And so I use my serum, so I do that. And then I do my traditional moisturizers. If my vitamin C serum were really oily, that might be different. Um, but some people just rely on their moisturizers for vitamin C, but I put it on mine before my moisturizer and after I do my other stuff. I have a question, Stephanie. Uh, you said cleanse, tone, exfoliate. Yep. That just threw me for a loop because I am very- Oh, sorry. I'm, okay, okay. I, I'm, I was talking about um, not a scrub. I was talking about like- oh, like uh, so like our toning pads, right? Yeah. Okay. So those would be the same thing. They, they would be a, it would be like a toning exfoliant. Okay. So I'm, I'm talking like, okay. Example routine. Yeah. Let's say I want to use a beta hydroxy acid because I have a BHA because maybe I'm working on like my pore clarity. And so I would, and I'm, maybe I'm using like a soothing toner like a traditional toner, I would cleanse. I would use my soothing toner because I want that to stay on my skin. Then I would potentially apply my BHA and press that on top. Then I would go into my other stuff. Okay. So that's what I meant. But I'm, I'm thinking like, I'm honestly just thinking in my head about specific products. Um, it's, it's a little... I'm just saying like with vitamin C, make sure you do all your other stuff first and then use your vitamin C serum and then go into your moisturizers. It's yeah. for me, it's very different day and night. Am I, am I using a scrub to exfoliate or am I using this? Um, am I using something like a lactic acid? A lot of times those are the same thing. Um, and vitamin C is very interesting because I exclusively use vitamin C for the daytime and I exclusively use my exfoliating acids or retinoids at night. And I never mix any of those because vitamin C actually can neutralize retinoids and make them both not work. Um, and then there are a lot of really potent vitamin C's out there that can sensitize the skin. So you don't want to use them in conjunction with your exfoliating acids and stuff. And probably potentially not even after you've scrubbed your skin. Um, so I do all my stuff first. And if I'm using a toner, I'm using like, I have one that's literally like thick aloe stuff that I put on over. And then I use it as like a hydrating base. And then I do my vitamin C over the top. Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. No, you're good. I'm excited yeah. for our toning pads and that um, cream to come out to learn more about that, but it'll be interesting. Well, wow. and I really, I'm super excited about that because based on the few things that we know with that moisturizer too, being, uh, having alfalfa and celery, um, they have like, vit like every vitamin ever, like celery is like super rich in vitamin K and that really works on dark circles. Um, I'm really excited to see what these are all about, <laughs> but so, yeah, I would just say like, um, one thing too about vitamin C before I talk about SPF is that the very potent versions, um, you do have to be aware of how they impact your skin. People, when they start integrating in a vitamin C, which I think is actually super essential in the summer to be using vitamin C rich products, um, whether using a serum or just moisturizers or whatever, um, your skin can have like a minute to figure its life out when you start using it. I mean, it can make your skin irritated. It can, vitamin C serums can have a breakout period uh, while your skin is figuring out what is going on. It, it can be very, very potent. Um, and when your skin is damp or when you're using hydrating products and you put something like a vitamin C over the top, it helps it penetrate more deeply. 
which is like, yay, we want our vitamin C to penetrate deeply so it can do its job, right? But the deeper a product penetrates, it can make those irritating qualities do more also. Mm, okay. So when I make, again, recommendations on the order of application, like I, 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 that's why I don't follow these like specific, I mean, obviously like you want to wash your face first. Like, obviously we know that obviously if you're using like something on a toner pad that Mm -hmm. comes after that, because if you're putting something on and then using something on a pad, you're just wiping stuff off, you know, like that makes sense. But then it becomes a conversation again in the summer when it's warm and your pores are more open and you're hot and you're in the sun. Sometimes we shift order of operation in our routine because if my skin is more sensitive and I know that if I put something on my skin and it's gonna penetrate really deeply and it's gonna maybe be more irritating, what I'm gonna do then is start sandwiching my ingredients. So the sandwiching technique goes like I do my routine and I moisturize. Then I put whatever that ingredient is that could cause that irritation, whether it be my vitamin C, whether it be my retinoid, whether it be whatever it is on top of a moisturizer. And then I sandwich another moisturizer on top that buffers the product because it slows the absorption and then minimizes the potential irritation that comes in conjunction with that product. So that's why like summertime is interesting because we, I encourage people to use ingredients less that can be more irritating, especially um, that make our skin more photosensitive, but something like a vitamin C for daytime, super important. But again, there's like a little curve there. So we just, uh, it's more like, what can your skin tolerate? What vitamin C product are you using? Where do we fit it in? Like with the formula and how does it work? But again, it just comes down to like using vitamin C based ingredients is, is really important. Um, vitamin C and E are my superstar summertime ingredients for sure. And a lot of really good vitamin C serums will have vitamin E with them as well because they work super well together. And a lot of really potent serums will have vitamin C, vitamin E, and ferulic acid because ferulic acid helps stabilize vitamin C and it helps um, minimize some of the irritation that can come along with it too and keeps your, and helps with like photosensitivity overall too. So it's great. So is skin therapy your favorite vitamin C packed product in the Lime Life line? No, it's one of them though. So um, I love midnight oil also because marula is also a really rich source of vitamin C naturally. Um, all, if you actually look at our ingredient catalog, we have so many ingredients that are very, very rich in vitamin C. And that's one of the things that I love is that, and with what I know about our sourcing and how like the, the ingredient quality is so super, super high too. Um, but the two that I always go to when I'm thinking vitamin C rich products are absolutely um, skin therapy and the midnight oil That's because good. midnight oil is very, very vitamin C rich too. What about vitamin E? Um, a lot of our products are super vitamin E rich because a lot of the oils we use are very rich in vitamin E. Sunflower seed oil um, and safflower are in our due date and in our, if you actually look at the ingredient list of due date and compared to midnight oil, there's a lot of similarities, but the midnight oil actually takes it to a whole other level with the camellia and the marula. Um, and it's just absolutely lovely. So they're very, very rich. Sunflower seed oil is one of my favorite ingredients because there's a lot of clinical studies around the benefits for the skin and there have been for a very long time. And it is a super phenomenal source of vitamin E and minerals for the skin. It's very, very healing. Midnight oil for the win. Yep. Nice. Yeah, got but another. not everybody can, like, it depends on your skin type. Some people can use midnight oil year round. Some people in the summer, it's a little too rich for them. So then I recommend maybe a shift to due date because it's not quite as rich of an oil. Um, and then One Drop Wonder, 
is very light. It absorbs very quickly. It's super antioxidant rich. It's very healing. It fights hyperpigmentation. That's a great option as well. But I consider that more a booster oil as opposed to like an all over glaze me like a donut oil. <laughs> so, <laughs> different. so are you referring just to the midnight oil serum or are you, are you also encompassing the midnight oil cleanser with that too? Well, the ingredient profile is super similar. Okay. But I'm just saying like overall, again, it's all subjective. Skincare yeah. is super subjective. And so I make recommendations like every single one of us here have different skin and different needs and live in different places, you know? And so some people, they can use midnight oil cleanser year round, but maybe in the summer, um, especially if they're doing a double cleanse with it, but in the summer, maybe the serum's a little too rich. That's like me. So I and do. So it's that's oil why oil these conversations cream. are great because it's like not everything works for everyone year round. Yeah. Huh. And skin therapy is interesting because it, when you have products that are water-based and have shea and all of that, if your skin is not properly moisturized long-term when it absorbs it, it almost has like a matte feeling to it. And so some people, when they use, I recommend when they use skin therapy, put a little drop of one drop wonder or due date or midnight oil in it. If you feel like the dry down isn't rich enough. Hmm. And I'm really curious to, to see the weight of the new, um, green smoothie moisturizer it pretty because thick it's a face cream and I'm yeah. really excited that they use the word cream and yeah. I'm not going to say I was going to say that sounded really bad I'm excited we're gonna have a face cream <laughs> what were you gonna say I'm not gonna say it because it sounded great in my head and when it was starting to come out of my mouth it could be interpreted poorly <laughs> I was thinking butter me up but, uh, no, no, I was gonna say um but <laughs> Hydrating and moisturizing is really so important in the summer. And a lot of people will be like, I don't need a moisturizer in the summer. And I'm like, no, you do just find one that is appropriate for your skin and really lean into those antioxidants and vitamin C and E. And that's going to be really important for the skin. And some people for an SPF in the summer, um, an all in one product is great for day, you know, something that hydrates the skin and provides, um, SPF. And for some people, the perfect sunscreen is perfectly appropriate for them during the day. I know some people too that in the summer um, will kind of mix it a little bit with their moisturizer or just put a drop of oil in it and they will use that as their moisturizer for daytime. That's perfectly appropriate. I would much rather have people doing something like that than foregoing um, their SPF or foregoing anything on their skin because it does leave such a great finish on the skin and it does leave that balmy finish. And I think it's just so stellar in summer and it doesn't sting because it is a 19% zinc oxide. It actually has ingredients that are, um, that naturally fight hyperpigmentation as well that are firming. Like it's like a legit anti-aging moisturizing SPF makeup primer. It's amazing. Like chicory root, right? Is the one that kind of mimics the retinol mm -hmm. and then vitamin B. Right. And niacinamide. Um, so niacinamide is vitamin B3 and it is one of my favorite ingredients, but I hate the way most companies utilize it in formulations now, because now that it's like really trendy, they're like, oh, let's have this like really potent vitamin B serum, like this niacinamide serum. But you only need it in a constant when it, the way it's been studied is like in concentrations of 5% or less for it to be effective. And then you have companies putting out a 20% niacinamide serum. And then everyone's like, I can't use niacinamide. And I'm like, no, you can't use that one. That's silly. That's a shenanigan. You don't need a 20% niacinamide serum because niacinamide is naturally smoothing. Um, and it plays well with other ingredients. Cause earlier I was like, you know, don't mix your alpha hydroxies and retinoids and don't use vitamin C with your retinoids and don't use those together. Niacinamide plays with everything really well. It is like the ultimate skincare sidekick. And it's really phenomenal in skincare formulations because it's smoothing and soothing and reinforces our skin. It makes our skin stronger. It's like, I love it to death. It's great. Um, and so the perfect sunscreen really is a very solid, well-rounded 
sun care product. And I really do love it to death. And I love all of the body care, um, the body care products, the body SPF actually has hyaluronic acid in it. It's very hydrating. What I will say about um, zinc based sunscreen. So the reason why a lot of companies put out um, with the difference between a chemical sunscreen and a physical sunscreen, everything's a chemical. I'll just say that you're a chemical, water's chemical, everything's chemical. Yeah. Um, but in marketing verbiage, chemical sunscreen are the ones that absorb UV radiation to keep it from doing damage. Physical blockers are like the zinc oxide, titanium dioxide that physically bounce off the rays. But zinc oxide doesn't dissolve into a formulation. So when I get my like, that's an oil. When you have like a moisturizer, skin therapy, you pump it on your hand. This, a lot of these are, are mixed together into a solution where everything's like together and playing nicely. A mixture is ones where they're together, but they're not like chemically together. Does that make sense? So SPF is a mixture. I mean, um, zinc oxide sits in there, so it doesn't dissolve into anything. So it's just hanging out in the formulation with the other ingredients. You know, it's not linking arms with anybody. It's just kind of knocking around in there. Just that's just how zinc oxide works. So when you are using zinc based SPS anywhere on the body, they absorb very differently. You should have, if you feel like the zinc is sitting on top, it just needs something to give it a little more slip. You know, a drop of oil, let it sit and warm on the skin. Um, the reason why people traditionally have used the chemical absorbers on the face is they don't leave a white cast and they can absorb very quickly. You know, it's like people don't have to try, but they are very unpredictable. And one second they're like, this is great, this works. And then they pull it off the market and they're like, never mind, that one doesn't actually work. <laughs> because chemical absorbers actually trap very specific parts of wavelengths. So you need a bunch of them to be broad spectrum. So when you say, when you, something says broad spectrum, that's what it means. It has all these ingredients that can capture all the different wavelengths of light. And our side does a great job of that all by itself. Okay. But um, a 19% zinc oxide is very effective. And you'll see a lot of formulations with much lower numbers, but you gotta actually let it, like give it a minute on the skin because zinc doesn't absorb into formulations and it actually does not absorb into your skin. It sits superficially. Whereas chemical absorbers actually absorb into your skin and you actually literally need to give them 20 minutes before they're effective. You can pretty much slap off zinc oxide and like walk on the surface of the sun. Just kidding, don't do that. But um <laughs> The trip there. But they're just very different. And so when I've heard people say, like with our body sunscreen, like you can see it when you put it on. I'm like, yeah, you can see it at first, but you just work it in. And or if you need to like put on your body lotion first, make sure your body's not all dry. And then when you put it on, it's gonna go on more evenly. But when you're using physical blockers with the zinc oxide, it's just different and it is much more effective, but you can't just always just slap it on you do have to work them into the skin and high quality, high percentage zinc oxide formulations is just kind of how it is. Hey, Stephanie. What's up? Hey, I was wondering about, cause what I usually get ready really fast and don't have a lot of time. And so a lot of the times I'll mix the skin therapy and the due dates or must do, whichever it's called these days. Um, is that okay? That's my first question. Yeah. Absolutely. My second question is, is that I'm constantly dealing with dark circles and you said something about vitamin C is good for that. Vitamin K is good for that. Hey, sorry. So I'm really super excited for this new cream to come out. Um, vitamin. So people get dark circles in their eyes for a lot of different reasons. Um, and that's why they're very hard to treat because some people it's structural 
like literally the structure of their face under their eye is what it makes it look like you have dark circles. We have things sure. in there. Um, there is blood flow um, and vitamin K, you can find it in like bruise creams. It really helps manage like blood under the skin. And um, there are people that get dark circles and there's actually genetic links to it when people get a dark circles potentially with our um, vitamin K, met like how we m metabolize vitamin K overall and topically applied vitamin K can be really effective at managing dark circles. Um, vitamin C is really great at brightening. Um, so again, like with dark circles under the eyes, I really love products that have vitamin K in them because it can be so super effective, um, at help helping manage dark circles. But for some people, if it is just like structural, <laughs> the only thing that's going to work is fillers. <laughs> um, oh. do we have other than the green smoothie eye cream that's going to be coming out sometime soon. Do we have any other, um, products with vitamin K? Not like that. I don't think. It's pretty unique. Um, I'm going to dig into that a little bit more. Um, but, and I'm really curious to see the overall ingredient profile of the green smoothie. But I really do like, IRIs can work really great for some people with dark circles um, under the eye. You know, it really just depends. Sometimes caffeine is a really great ingredient under the eye because of how it constricts blood vessels. Um, so there are specific ingredients that can help in the short term, but yeah, that vitamin K is, um, I, I encourage people to increase their vitamin K in their diet, um, as well when, and to see if that helps, because that can make a difference too, like internally and, um, applied topically. So one more question for you, since I've got you, um, I had a little gal that was visiting that had a really that has a really bad case of uh, psoriasis. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's down her arms and stuff like that. Is there anything that you would suggest for that? Um, is she doing UV light therapy at all? I don't think so. And I just ran into a gal that actually sells those UV lights. And I thought, I wonder if that would work for her. They're kind of expensive, but. So the. And I don't know if you all know this. So psoriasis is actually, um, can be treated with UV light therapy. The only people that I tell are allowed to use tanning beds are um, people that battle psoriasis. Mm -hmm. And it can be very, very effective at treating it. But sometimes with psoriasis, um, there are some really great new medications out there, but it really depends on the person's skin and the extent of it. Um, I have to be really careful making recommendations as an esthetician. I, anything like that topically, I do love, um, I do love 40 cure cream. Tamanu, I think is a very great oil. Anything that is vitamin E rich, I think can be very helpful at helping the skin maintain its integrity and heal. So mm -hmm. anything that's really rich in, in vitamin E, I'm a huge fan of, but UV light therapy is one of the, one of the things that is recommended widely for um, chronic psoriasis and some of the newer medications that are out there. It's just one of those things that um, topically we can only do so much, but again, vitamin E is kind of my superstar and vitamin E rich ingredients. And I do love 40 cure for eczema and psoriasis. Thanks. Yeah, happy to help. I'm glad to see you here. I just got out of the bath. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Okay, I was, like, so. was like, hey, we're having a little thing. And I'm like, hey, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm like, just don't turn on your video. And she's like, oh my gosh. Oh, I love it when we have our video on. It's great. Well, in the tub, maybe not. Oh, wow. Well. That's um, <laughs> So at least, yeah, the, the skin therapy and due date mix it together is awesome. Yeah, I think um, that's great. I actually know a lot of people that, and I don't know how, what you think about this, Stephanie, but mixing Sotox, like a pump of Sotox, a drop of one drop wonder together all at once. Boom. Bing, bing. bing. Fine. Yeah. I care that people are putting it on their Something skin. Better than I feel anything. like it absorbs. Honestly, like that's what I care about. Yeah. Because again, like I just want people to do stuff in a way that works for them because 
our skincare can only be effective if we use it consistently. And it, you gotta start somewhere and find a process and a routine that you can just do um, literally like, and I was telling Laura Martins, she was having a lot of issues with her skin. And I was like, I always say, let's step it back. Like, how are you doing on stuff? And she wasn't being consistent. And I was like, we, I'm not even going to have a conversation with you about changing your routine until you can be ruthlessly consistent with your routine. It has to be like ruthless consistency before you can judge if something's working or not. Like absolutely like ruthless with your consistency. And it, when people find a process that allows them to do that, like mix away, slap it on, do what you got to do. So you're doing it. And then when you get to a place of consistency, then we can see what's working, what's not, and how we want to make adjustments. Mm. Yeah. You've had that conversation with me a couple of times too. Yeah. <laughs> like we want to talk until you are doing your your stuff consistently because because that's the thing and so um very few ingredients have immediate results spf is one of the things that is immediate benefit um exfoliating products can have an immediate benefit as far as glow but there are ingredients that you can't tell if it's actually working until you've been using it three to six months, sometimes six months, till you really start seeing the deeper effects and the real effects of it. And so that's why consistency matters so much because you get set back so much when you're not doing stuff. And in the summer, I find people get kind of lazy with their skincare. And then they're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And then at the end of the summer, I gotta fix everyone's face, which I'm happy to do. But it's unnecessary because like, we just want to like really pay attention. And that's one of the things that I teach about how to make your skincare routine effective year round is be aware, pay attention to your skin. How does it feel? How does it feel after you cleanse your skin? Is it feeling clean? Does it feel too dry? Does it feel tight? How does it feel right when you put on your moisturizer? Okay. How does it feel 10 minutes later? How does it feel 30 minutes later? You know? When you're out about in the day, when it's starting to get hotter, are you finding your makeup breaking down? Are you feeling like your skin is stinging? You know, like being aware throughout being consistent will do everything to really get your routine nailed down and helping you meet your skin goals. It makes a really, really big difference. Okay. So what does it, what does it mean when your skin does sting? Okay. After cleansing or when you're hot, tell me about it. Um, you know, not, I don't have it very often, but I used to have it before using, uh, Lime Life mm -hmm. and, but I have had it happen like certain products maybe on my skin. I, it's just super sensitive and, mm -hmm. um, like I went to get a facial the other day and, um, she actually used a different product on me and I felt a little bit of tingling going on and I thought, Ooh, is this going to get worse? didn't get any worse, but it did remind me of when, uh, my skin would kind of sting. I think but. we talked, that was the exfoliating. She put like an exfoliant on you, right? Yeah. I think it was to kind of help soften or break down something. I don't know. I wasn't really listening. I was getting a massage. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, don't talk to me right now. I just want to relax. That's fair. <laughs> So stinging on the skin. Um, so when you cleanse, if you feel like your skin is stingy and tight after you've cleansed your skin, that means that maybe um, it's a little too much and your skin has been stripped a little bit much. And when you get really tight and stingy, that can actually be little like microscopic cracks, fissures like happening in the skin. So that's an mm -hmm. indication that maybe your skin is too dry and you're using a cleanser that is too drying for your skin. Um, now, like a tingle during a facial or with certain like active ingredients, um, you know, they can, I could say they can be a little spicy, you know, that's because that's what they're meant to do. Like lactic acid, glycolic acid, all those bad boys, they are meant to literally break up the cellular bonds on your skin. And so the depth of penetration and how intense they are, because there's a really wide intensity of exfoliating acids based on the percentage and the pH. And you will feel it differently 
based on that and how sensitive your skin is. So that's what that stinging is. And I always say, does it settle does, or does it stay? Because some of those, when you use them initially, they can be able to have a little spice, little, little stingle tingle, and then they settle. And sometimes it can be too much. So pay attention to that. In the summer, when we get warm, our pores open up more and it, stuff can penetrate more deeply into our skin. And so sometimes that's when a sensitivity comes into play. Like I have very few SPF products that I can use because in the summer, they literally sting the crap out of my face. They are so uncomfortable and it sucks and I don't like it. So there are a lot of different things that can make something like sting on the face. Sometimes it's acceptable and sometimes it's not. It just, it's really the root of why it's making your skin sting. You know, and sometimes like if you're using a product and it's just uncomfortable on your skin, I'd say like, if, you know, cause some moisturizers would do that. I hear a lot of it with um, SPFs, especially those chemical absorbers can do that to a lot of people. Um, I say, just don't use them and find something that works. But I'm, I'm really curious with our exfoliating pads that are coming out because we've never had a product like this before. And I haven't seen the percentage or the pH on it. And I don't know quite how spicy it's going to be. Um, so I'm curious to see how that's going to feel on the skin because that type of tingle is good. It's active. It's doing something. It's doing its job, but it shouldn't be uncomfortable. And um, with something like that, like in your facial, you put it on and enzymes can do that too. And then you wash it off and it should settle. So the cool thing about even something like a toner pad with lactic acid, um, you can actually wash it off. They will do their job very well if you use them. You can even let it sit like you would a mask and then wash it off and do your routine if it's too much. That's perfectly appropriate for alpha hydroxies, especially when you're like easing into using them. Like use it like a mask and wash it off and the sting should go away. I have risen to an issue with uh, my thinning hair mm -hmm. that when I'm outside, I have actually sunburned my scalp because mm -hmm. it's so thin and I can't stand to wear hats because my hair is so thin. Mm -hmm. I'm hot anyway. I don't need to be adding anything else on my head. Mm -hmm. Is there anything, I mean, I've read some stuff that One Drop Wonder can help protect your hair, but can it also, when you rub it onto your scalp, protect your scalp? So certain oils do have a natural ability to protect from UV, but not at the percentage that like a sunscreen would. So like a SPF 30 essentially snags 97% of UV rays. SPF 50, I think is at like 98%, um, something like that. But mm -hmm. something like an oil that is UV protective, protecting from some of the damage of UV is not the same as providing like a SPF level. Something like an oil, a lot of times they only will snag 10, 20, maybe 30% of that bandwidth as opposed to something where an SPF would act is actually getting literally like high 90s. Mm -hmm. And so there's a ice, and I see this taught really inappropriately by people sometimes. And I, one time I like threw down, I was like, stop telling people that your oil is an SPF. It's not, it doesn't do that. It is not an SPF. It doesn't work that way. Knock it off. Um, there are some powder sunscreens and there are some that are translucent that can work really, really great for the scalp. Um, and they can double as the dry shampoo. Um, Skin Suticles makes one that shimmers, which is my favorite because why would I not want to be sparkly? And that's one of my favorite ways to touch up my sunscreen because you actually do need to be reapplying every 80 minutes, 80 to 90 minutes, two hours max when you're going to be in the sun. Um, and like I was saying earlier, when you are religiously reapplying your sunscreen, they are now finding that your skin is protected enough from that UV exposure that it can potentially have time to heal previous damage from the sun. Hmm. The number one thing that ages us is sun exposure. Right. It is 
and absolutely ruthless with how, because it creates a chemical process in the skin and enzymatic process that literally destroys the collagen in our skin. And as we age hormonally, especially when we hit menopause, that starts happening naturally. And UV is just really absolutely um, so hard on our skin in so many ways. And um, so one of the ways I do like to reapply my sunscreen, I don't think I have it here, is with the powder duster sunscreens. And they can be really, really great in the hair because they don't always leave a ton of residue. They have clear ones. Um, they actually have ones that mattify. And so for people that even get like an oilier scalp, they can be really great. So that's what I recommend um, for protecting the top of the head. And you don't want to wear a hat. They're some of my favorites. I really do like them. And they are a physical blocker. So they're super effective. Where do you find those types of things? I've never seen of seen of them. Um, I can send you information on that. Skin SkinCeuticals okay. is a really, really, um, not SkinCeuticals, I'm sorry, Color Science. I don't know why I said <laughs> silly me. Color Science, I was talking about SkinCeuticals earlier today. Um, Color Science. Color Science has really great SPF stuff. Um, and I love their sun forgettable and it's like a little tube with a brush and you pop it up and they have a lot of different options. Um, Peter Thomas Roth makes one. Um, you could just Google powder SPF probably and have a lot of options pop up. Got the fruit fly. <laughs> Yay. Um, I'm looking ninja, but that is, um, yeah, so sorry, not skin SkinCeuticals, color science, but if you just Google um, powder sunscreen. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I just did. It's got a little brush applicator. Yeah. And that was one of the things like that, mine goes with me everywhere. Um, they are not cheap, but they, it is, I feel like they last a really long time. They are super effective. Um, I would keep that with me because when my kids were little, you know, sometimes we would like randomly end up somewhere out in the sun and my kids are like clear, like they make me look like I have a tan right now. And so they just cannot handle the sun. And I remember one time we were going to be going to Target and I was driving there. My friend was like, you want to meet us at the zoo? And I was like, yes. So we went to the zoo instead of Target and it was not prepared. My kids were little and all I had was my color science on me, my powder sunscreen. And I literally, and it was shimmery, mind you, of course it was shimmery. And so I covered my three little boys in sparkly powder sunscreen. And <laughs> it's like, we're going to put this to the test. And they did not, I mean, they were as pale as the day they were born. No, because they were burdened by hair. thinking about the sun. And um, it is really very, very effective. So awesome. I love these zooms. I know. I'm glad we're back. Me too. It's so much Yay. fun. So I want to finish by let's talk about body care really quick because body SPF for sure. Um, I just like to lotion up and put on your body sunscreen at least to start the day if you think you're going to be out in the sun. One of the questions I get asked about so much is about people wanting to reverse sun damage specifically on their decollete. And this area is such an easy spot to accidentally sunburn. And it, it is very, very thin like the skin on our faces. And so as an esthetician, when we learn about skin and we do facials, we actually consider the skin, the decollete and up. And so don't just stop everything we're talking about here. You know, it doesn't stop at the jawline, backs of hands, like, hands look great. And then one day you look at them and you're like, whose hands are these? I'm literally entering that phase of my life of whose hands are my, these are my hands. Um, when you are doing your, your skincare, get the backs of your hands as well. Any excess on your hands, get it on the backs of your hands at night. Um, vitamin C up the backs of your hands, SPF, the backs of your hands, get your stuff all down here. When I do my stuff, especially at night, I get it all up in the business because it makes a huge difference. I've really done a lot of work on the sun damage on my chest. I'm actually shocked at how um, much better it's gotten. But um, the number one place, at least this was a little while ago, I'm curious to see where it is now, the one, number one place that 
men get skin cancers on the tops of their shoulders, the backs of their shoulders. The number one place that women find it a lot of times is on the backs of their calves. Yeah, Becky had a bad skin cancer thing on the back of her calf. I just and, had two spots on my on the front of my thighs taken off. And um, tops of ears mm -hmm. is another spot. And so the unfortunately, the skincare and the SPF conversation a lot of times stops hairline to jawline, and that's not that's not it. You know, the driving side of the face is another. The nose is another, but we have these obscure spots that we don't think like the backs of our cats, you know, that's very, like, it's very important head to toe um, because the rays that give you skin cancer are not the rays that burn you. So the UVA rays are the ones that age you, the UVB rays um, and the ones that they're different, you know, and so, and a lot of times skin cancer that we find as an adult actually happened before the damage happened before the age of 18. Yeah. And, um, and so it's like, like, I love that we have a good body SPF and it makes a huge difference. It's a great product. It smells so good. So just like sunscreen head to toe and then that bamboo renew and the home pedicure, cause we're going to be seeing toes. We see toes more. That's the thing. We're like, oh, those are my feet. That's great. Um, I had a bit of baseball game in shorts earlier this week. And I was like, huh, I didn't know I was going to be in shorts today. She probably should have shaved my legs, but here we are. <laughs> this is happening. I'm in sandals. What's happening? I haven't seen my feet in a while. So um, we can have a more in-depth like body care conversation again, because I loved ours before, but those types of things, it's like, though, that's, Summertime, it's like lean into exfoliating maybe a little differently. Simplify the routines. Don't forget to hydrate, even if it's warmer. And then really, really own that SPF like it's your job because it really makes a huge, huge difference and like head to toe difference. But um, that's one of the things that I'm really going to start talking about more. And it's something that you guys can all share about is like when you're doing your skincare routine, don't stop at the jawline and get the backs of your hands. And I've actually seen a huge difference. And a lot of times the hand that we pump our products into, if you pump it into your hands and some people pump it on the backs of their hands, they will actually see a noticeable difference in which hand looks better. I can see a difference in mine, like visible difference in my, in my hands with the one that I know gets more skincare products. Or when I've been on set and I'm using stuff on this hand for prep, this hand is in way better condition than this hand. <laughs> and this is on the driver's side, so it should have more damage. Funny. So, yeah. So this was so fun. Um, I'm super excited to, that we're getting these going again. I'm so happy to see everyone here. And stay tuned for more All-Star Beauty sessions in our summer series. I'll probably be in my Target sweatsuits all summer long in the evening because I'm obsessed with them. We're just going to be on like a rotating. I'm going to get some. I like it. It's crop top. It's great. Oh, it's it. crop top. Maybe I'll pass. <laughs> I'll keep with the long length hoodie. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Guys. All right, ladies. Thank you so much for coming. This was so much fun. Um, contact your beauty guide if you have any questions. Thanks for hanging out with us and give us suggestions for topics you would like us to cover in these for sure, because we want to share about what you want to learn about for sure. All right. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Bye.